Two players who know each other so well, been in a new environment and a new tournament. We cannot wait. Over to your MC. Just one more match to go of the session. Two legends of the sport of snooker. Let's get the action underway. Up first, please welcome a gentleman who's already won two matches in the tournament. Let's hear it for the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. And now, welcome to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Number one, Ronnie the Rocket O'Sullivan. Snooker legends, Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins. The last quarter final here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker, Ronnie O'Sullivan against John Higgins. The head to head is O'Sullivan 38. Higgins 33. Their very first meeting as professionals was in the Middle East. It was at the Dubai Classic in 1994. 30 years ago, they were teenagers. Starting out, O'Sullivan was already UK champion. And the tournament after that one, Higgins won the Grand Prix. That was his first ranking title. And here they are, nearly 50, still at the top of the game, still providing great entertainment. John Higgins, of course, has played two matches already. <laughs> Yesterday, he was a late call-up, beat Mark Williams, another Class of 92 member. Last night, O'Sullivan coming in. The biggest crowd so far, even though it is late here. Looking forward to this one, as Dominic, I'm sure, is as well. Yes, absolutely, I really am. Interesting to see what sort of shape Ronnie's game's in as well, ahead of the World Championships, which begins in the middle of April, as it always does, of course. Now Sullivan gunning for the record of eight world championship victories in the modern era. That is, of course, John Higgins, four times world champion. These two players, well, what careers they've had. The amount of prize money they've won, the number of ranking event victories. Two true sporting legends, not just snooker legends. Yes, and the other thing to say, with the, of course the gold ball here for the super maximum, 167, they are the two leading maximum break makers. O'Sullivan 15, Higgins 13, he made his 13th uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Championship League. O'Sullivan, the last player in the tournament to, to start out. Of course, delighted that no one's made the 167 because it's the first player to do it that scoops the half a million pound jackpot. He said before the event, because there was some discussion where that ball would be placed. He says, Where, wherever it is, I'll find it. <laughs> Which is quite an ominous statement for the game's greatest ever break builder. So it'll be fascinating to see if he does get some sort of chance, how far he gets. Of course, John Higgins last night. Got it was so exciting, actually. Just finished a little bit too close to it and missed it. certainly ruined it let's put the black safe for now it's a pretty decent safety shot Ronnie O'Sullivan can't get through to the left hand side of the table that's brought the black back into play and it's a good safety shot as well once again this time John Higgins can't get through to the left hand side of the table it's heavily congested on this right hand side but there is a pot that Ronnie can I beg your pardon John Higgins can attempt it the red closest to that corner pocket now it looks easier in your picture than it is in actuality this is very missable and of course there'll be a lot of pressure on it because there are lots of reds in open play
mentioned their first meeting 30 years ago. The most recent was this season at the Shanghai Masters where John Higgins looked like he was going to win. 5-2 up, O'Sullivan came back and beat him 6-5. That was the first of his four titles this season. He's won, of course, record extending eighth UK Championship and Masters, the World Grand Prix as well. His last TV outing, though, O'Sullivan, the Players' Championship, he lost 6 0 to Mark Selby. And he was completely outplayed. It can happen when these great players meet. If one really gets on top of their game, they can do it. You always think it's kind of going to be close, but it doesn't always work out that way. Really good safety shot there, Ronnie O'Sullivan. John Higgins in a spot of bother here. Just sure, I saw a quick shot there of our referee for this final match of this evening's session, Tatiana Wollaston, wife of professional tour player Ben Wollaston. Well, if John Higgins is outfoxed in the safety stakes, you know it's a good one. forward and taps his cue on the table you know it's a good response as well there's a lot of respect between these two clearly all the battles they've had in major events for three decades and here's a new territory in Saudi Arabia for the latest chapter and even though O'Sullivan's in front no one else has beaten him 33 times have they so Higgins just behind on the head-to-head -head, but still a fine record <coughs> By the way, the latest ever finish, 4.31 a.m., the International Open 1996. Joe Johnson and Peter Ebden, they went on at eight minutes past midnight. That was a best of nine affair. Joe won 5-4. These two started around about 10 to 2 local time, a.m. So, I mean, that record could be under threat. I say record. I'm not sure, I'm not sure Joe particularly is proud of it. safety shot but there may be a possible red on here for John Higgins but he'll be hampered by the golden ball that's a sentence I didn't think I'd live to say Well, after a long and protracted safety exchange, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan that has the first meaningful opportunity now. One. And he's on the black. Yes. And we heard him with the interview with Ken before it started. It's definitely on his mind. It's on everyone's mind, but no one's made more maximums than this man feel like the, the sort of fitting person to do it if anyone were to do it wouldn't he
60. Ron is convinced this red nearest the left corner will pot. He'll try and double kiss the red next to it for position on the black. Well, in actual fact, 70. he didn't really control the shot at all, so trusted to luck a little in the end. He may be on this pinky note. Continue, but the golden be removed. Twenty-three. I think one of the best things about this event is there'll be so many people here who've never seen professional snooker live before, never had the chance, never had the opportunity. And they'll have seen this man for sure on television, various streaming platforms. But what a great privilege it will be to be here to watch him playing, of course, another legend, John Higgins. And if you've had an all-day ticket, my word, you've been really treated to some drama. Thirty-one. Yeah, I suppose, Dave, this is snooker's equivalent of watching the Beatles and the Rolling Stones in the same concert. 32. Well, these two have been going probably as long as the Rolling Stones, haven't they? Still at the top of their game as well. That's the thing. Ronnie O'Sullivan's the world number one. He's won the Masters and the UK Championship this season. He's favourite for the World Championship. Quite incredible. 39. Just finished the wrong side of the blue, so had to 53. leave this red from mid distance. Almost pop, but he did run a favour actually because he was able to get the cue ball closer to the black. It's been a good break this from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Probably the game's greatest ever break builder. Approaching 1250 61. career centuries. He's on 1244 at the moment. Nobody's. 62. Anywhere near him, except his opponent here, John Higgins, who's eight away from reaching that landmark thousandth century. Yeah, I don't know about the Beatles and the Stones. It's sort of Bill Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, isn't it? This Ronnie was the first to make the thousand. John Higgins will be the second. He's looking business-like already, isn't he? It's been a good break, this, and this red... Should secure 69. frame one. Seven. There's a nice safety exchange at the start of the frame. Sullivan got in and he stayed in. Well, it's a great effort that. 75. Uh, Get into those reds and add Saudi Arabia to the list of countries where he ma he's made a century. There's still a chance. <laughs> There's still a chance he's doubled the red. Seventy-eight. 
79. I think the thing with O'Sullivan, he said it again in the interview with Ken, he doesn't play everything now. 87. When he is at a tournament, he's focused on doing well in that tournament. And this is right up his street, isn't it? One table, big money, it's a new event in a new market with a new innovation. Exactly the sort of tournament 94. where traditionally he has thrived. 95. And he's going to start the night, surely, by potting this blue with a century. It's just gone two in the morning. Worth waiting for. And he looks wide awake. 100. What a way to start. First frame that he's played in this event. 108. And it begins with what potentially may be a total clearance of 135. Incredible stuff. The perfect start. Even whatever that noise was didn't put him off. 135, a total clearance by the game's greatest ever player, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Hits the ground running against John Higgins. Finals are through already at this Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. We've got the world number four, Luca Purcell, the world number three, Mark Allen, the world number two, Judd Trump, and already the world number one, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who made a 1 3 5, a total clearance as he attempts to set up a meeting with Trump tomorrow the both the semi-finals but still best of seven in the afternoon the final will be a best of nine affair here tomorrow evening by John Higgins there. I think the shot he'd like to have played would be the red in and out of bolt, but that golden ball was right in his way there. Couldn't play the shot that he wanted to play. Oh, we saw a glimpse of the two reds. They're just set for the bottom jaw, and had they been set for the top jaw, I'm sure Ronnie would have attempted the plant.
Well, John Higgins may not be able to get through to the red over the corner pocket, as you can see, but the red that's closest to the cue ball would cut into the centre pocket. But would you want to risk it, having witnessed that terrific 135 from Ronnie O'Sullivan in the first frame? If he were to foul that golden ball, it would be a four point foul. Jan Bahas and Paul Collier, two senior referees, have written out the, the rules that will govern that ball, which of course is uh, only on the table as long as a maximum is available. But it's quite right. You know, the rules are written down because you can guarantee something could happen and you want it all kind of written in stone. John felt that he had no choice there but to try and pop the red off the side cushion. It's not a difficult shot to judge, except that when you're behind the bolt cushion and you're so far away from the red, you can't really see the part of the cushion you actually need to hit to make the pot. But it's easy to judge when you're actually down this other end of the table where the red is. But it could be a very costly mistake but that red that's just to the left of the pink is the only one that would appear that Ronnie can, can take on here. Down? Thank you. <coughs> well, just someone moving in his eye line, so referee Tatiana Wollaston is asking him to be still. Handy little gap to stun the cue ball through there, wasn't there? And yes, these reds are placed about as well as you could expect them to be. So, once again, the gold ball will vanish for another frame. But O'Sullivan, as I said in the first frame, you know, he's got his business-like head on here. He mentioned again with him, you want to win the tournament. If a really good chance comes along for the super maximum, he'll chase it. But for now, it's only the second frame he's played. He's looking to keep the pressure on this man. He's already looking a bit concerned there, John Higgins. 15. and rightly so, he hasn't potted a ball yet. And I do like the way that Ronnie walks around the table and studies the situation of the balls. Something that he never used to do when he turned professional. That's why that record 147, in terms of the time it took to make the break, will never 20. be beaten, in my opinion, because that particular time the way Ronnie played the game, he just played for position on a ball, saw the shot and played it. He didn't walk around the table studying alternatives.
They are rather tricky to get on some of these reds. There's a big group of them below the pink spot there in the middle of the table. They're all blocking each other. There is one player that can sort that problem out. It's this man here. Forty-six. Oh, you can see there's a gap through to this red, and by the lookers of it, there's a plant just below it that will also go to the same pocket. Forty-seven. So maybe things aren't quite as awkward for Ronnie O'Sullivan as I perhaps first thought. Ominous signs for John Higgins here already. Fifty-two. And in the second frame. is going to have a look I think at those two reds that look to be a plant because he didn't really want to have to pot the pink because he knows it'll be tied up because it's spots occupied but if that plant is available then it virtually guarantees that Ronnie O'Sullivan will win the frame if he can pot this pink because it doesn't need to pot too many balls to be safe. Slight delay, I think, to winning the frame is just Tatsy Alliston having to sort the pink out. Ronnie always just sits down, lets the referee do what they have to do. Front of 67 on. Just notice something on the cue ball. Centuries to start, couldn't it? Now, Sean Murphy did that and he lost, so it's still only 67. going to be 2 0, but even so, it's about as definitive a 2 0 as you can see. When he gets his mind in the right place, he is just so, so dangerous. And he's come here clearly very determined to do well in this brand 75. new tournament. 76.
81. And I was just thinking, Dave, how many times would you witness the 88. greatest exponent of any sport 89. who is also the most watchable exponent of that sport? And I think Ronnie O'Sullivan is the most aesthetically pleasing snooker player I've ever seen. I think John Higgins would probably agree with that, and he's seeing it 95. from, I guess, the worst seat in the house, really. He sat there. It's because Ronnie O'Sullivan's monopolising the table. And as I say, he's going to start with back-to-back -back centuries. Just brilliant. Just brilliant so far. 102. And the thing is, because he's renowned as such a talent, you would expect him to produce this, but you, you know you can't just click your fingers. It's quite remarkable. But late at night, 107. He's waiting to play. Hasn't played on the table before. Doesn't know how it's playing. He can come out and make two breaks like this. 111. 116. 122. So no golden ball potted yet, but Ronnie O'Sullivan has brought the golden touch to Riyadh. 135, 129. Back to back total clearances from Ronnie O'Sullivan to lead John Higgins 2 0. And already he is halfway towards a semi final meeting with Judd Trump tomorrow. Thank you, friends. 2 0. Ronnie, Ronnie O'Sullivan. 135, 129. The two breaks that have won him. First two frames. There was a tournament last season in Hong Kong, big invitation event with the biggest live audience we've ever seen, over 9,000 people. He won that one as well. Exactly, same sort of thing really. A new event, highly prestigious, elite field, one table, lots of interest, and is this reality? Well, he's still only, of course, the quarterfinals, but that is by any measure some start to a match. Not a graphic that could be put up that's going to look good for John, let's be honest. Not yet, anyway. Because <coughs> the overall point to that reply record is held by Sullivan. 5 5 6. That was in the Masters against Ricky Walden a decade ago. Of course, that was a best of 11. Might not be enough frames for him to break that here, but even so, shows how tuned up he is, how zoned in he is for this event, the way he started. As I say, though, Murphy also began, didn't he, with two great breaks, and ultimately didn't get the win. wonder if Ronnie used the golden ball there just to use it as a stopper for the cue ball, use it as a guide. Now John could take this red on in theory to the right corner. The cube will be running down towards the red and the black. He may be on the black. I think he's seen enough of the first two frames not to want to risk it. of that John Higgins and I thought for a moment it got away with it but maybe this red will cut into the right centre
Kibble kissed the golf ball earlier, but it, it hasn't moved on, has it, the whole week, from what we've seen, amazingly. Yeah, that's about as far as I've seen it moved, which was no more than about a quarter of an inch. It's incredible. Because that would be interesting. I mean, obviously, in theory, if you make a maximum, you've got to get from the black to where it is now on the ball cushion. But if it moved before that, then you play it from where it is. And obviously, if it came away and was more readily possible, then it would make it more likely. Whether we'll see it or not, I can't say. Obviously, there's only one more day after today, but it has certainly added a layer of interest to this event. No one was quite sure how it would work or how it would go down, but we saw last night when Higgins was on for it, everyone was really excited. And I think the key thing is, of course, once the maximum is not possible, because it's taken away, it doesn't then affect the frame, so it just becomes normal snooker again. Good cue ball from Ronnie O'Sullivan, considering where he was, but he has left a possible red for John Higgins. But this is going to look three times harder than this actually is because he hasn't potted a ball yet in this match. And Ronnie O'Sullivan is in an imperious form, it would seem. I'm surprised John Higgins didn't take that red on. I really am. I think Ronnie O'Sullivan will be pleased to see that John refused it. It just gives you an idea of John's mindset, perhaps, that he's trying to use his tactical abilities to gain opportunities easier than the one he just refused. Well, he scored some points, albeit from a foul. So many snooker fans enjoy this match. Even if you have a favourite, it's one to say that they've played 18 finals, you know, it's 10 8 in finals alone to O'Sullivan, including 2001 World Championship final. That was his first crucible success. Of course, John Higgins, maybe his 
most famous win over O'Sullivan was the, the Masters final, the last match at Wembley Conference Centre 2006. He made that unbelievable clearance in the decider. But everyone will have their favourites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the cheeks. Last thing you needed, really. Well, I don't know how that cue ball found the pocket. There didn't seem to be a gap. Just missed that brown by a millimetre and in off the yellow. Very unlucky. But sometimes you can make these mistakes and it can be beneficial because if Ronnie doesn't knock this red in, John Higgins could be in. middle of the table making it awkward to go into the pack of reds but that problem will be removed very shortly not a good pack to go 12. into I don't think from the black but Ronnie had no choice uh, let's just see how these reds open up here be interesting to see how Ronnie plays this I think he'll try and play it with as much backspin on the cue ball as he can muster. side of the pack bring a few more reds into play and try and gain position on the blue perhaps just overran it but still a choice of at least three of the colors here Sullivan, 30. Well, maybe the first significant mistake in Sullivan. Just in terms of it was sort of unexpected. He's not like he's left John a sitter here, but he was out of his seat pretty quickly nonetheless. John attempted to cut that red in, but misjudged the movement of the cue ball with side spin and undercut it by a long way.
another chance here for John Higgins to cut this red into the left corner. It'll automatically be on the yellow at least. No, undercut that one as well. Oh, will this cue ball reach the pocket? It may do. It has. Oh, this is quite the nightmare for John Higgins. He couldn't envisage this sort of beginning to the match. This is, the Sullivan's playing so well. So well, in fact, that it's making John struggle. Yes, it just seems everything's going wrong for him. He's left another red from range. Hand on table. Always fancy for those. So it's his chance for 3-0. And this match has been completely one-sided, hasn't it? Seven. The only four points Higgins has scored in the frame in the match have come from a foul. It's already starting to look like the two players of the season, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Judd Trump, will clash in the semi finals tomorrow. They've each won four titles already, remember? And there are just enough points on the table for a third consecutive century. 20. So you see two snookers needed. Frame is done. It, to be honest, it feels like the match is done, and that's no offence at all to the great John Higgins, but he's been unable to find a way in. And O'Sullivan looks completely composed. <laughs> completely on it. Completely in control. 44. As I say, this can happen. It happened to him 45. the other way around with Mark Selby in Telford at the Players' Championship. Beat him six mil, played outstandingly well. Fifty two. Fifty three. So, as Tom says, chance for three centuries in three frames. Crowd, I think, applauding the hundred on the board. That's not the break, of course. Sixty. Not Sixty, but just enjoying what they're watching. Sixty-one. Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. Got a problem here. This yellow is very straight. 
70 cents. Keep going. Oh, what a shot. We've seen it in Bangkok, we've seen it in Sheffield, we're seeing it in Riyadh. The genius of Ronnie O'Sullivan, this black, and it's three centuries to lead 3-0. And there's the reaction from this crowd, loving what they're watching. He's one away from the semis, leading 3-0. of the hour and it's quite late by the way the hour here it's nearly three in the morning but Ronnie O'Sullivan has made three centuries in as many frames John Higgins beat to uh, Ali Al Obaidli the, from four. Qatar didn't John Higgins to in the first round and as another Qatari player Ahmed Saif once played Neil Robertson in a European tour event and he not only did not pot a ball Robertson made four centuries against him so th th there's a precedent <laughs> his respect John Higgins is on another level isn't he to be able to lose this match without holding a ball that would be something there's the points without reply of course Higgins did score well was received the four-point foul to sort of stop the the rush of points being scored against him Very good safety from Ronnie O'Sullivan, except for the fact that that red has finished near the corner pocket. But John can't roll it in for the black, as you so often can when you're faced with a shot like this, because the red is blocking the black. So the other thing worth considering as well, I suppose, is the fact that John Higgins, being 3-0 behind, he hasn't potted a ball yet in the match. He's got to be taking on pots now. He's got to try and do something to get a foothold in this match. But no, refused it. I'm amazed. It's not the best safety. Ronnie could cut that red in that's to the left of the blue. I don't think he'll attempt it, though, because the cube will be coming in and out of bulk. It makes a shot risky. take the red on and the people did come in now to bulk has he been unfortunate oh goodness me he really has been touching ball declare please wow cue ball even touching the blue so ronnie has to declare his blue. color here blue ball thank you so he's nominated blue he can just play away from it and using that golden ball just as a stopper for the cue ball
was a pot I wasn't sure John would bother with because getting position from this red to the black, although John thought it was possible, proved difficult. Well, the red in bulk is surely going to precipitate the stalemate. reds were much more tightly bunched then certainly there'd be every likelihood of a re-rack but I just wonder whether John Higgins will fancy winning this tactical exchange yeah, we, we can't really see from this angle exactly what he can see from behind the shot I just wonder if Ronnie can play one of the reds closest to that right centre pocket into the one that's over the corner pocket. <laughs> wow. Amazing, there was a gap through those reds to actually plant that one in, but it still needed executing to perfection. And my goodness, what a shot it was. Yeah, there's your stalemate. In fact, he's got a chance to win it here. Eight. Well, I mean, it's just getting worse, isn't it, for John Higgins, I'm afraid. It just ah. goes to show, doesn't it, as a sportsman, sports person to be politically correct you, you've got to be prepared for nothing and everything you just do not know what can happen whenever you play a match 14 15 could he end with the fourth century the first player you know to make four centuries in a row is John Higgins against Ronnie O'Sullivan, the 2005 Grand Prix final. 20. Four centuries in four frames successively. Well, you can see the perspective view there of what some of the audience members are able to see from their front row seats. And what they're watching is a bit of a masterclass from a very special sports person in Ronnie O'Sullivan. Incredible to think that he's still at his very best as he approaches his 50th 36. year. 36. 37. some more jangling snooker today none more so than the decider between mark allen and mark selby but <laughs> allen eventually won well, with a double actually on the last black but this has been a procession not over yet but he's in with his chance to wrap it up 52 53 Too much more to do. The black puts him 61 in front. So another red and a black or a red and a pink. Higgins would need a snooker. And it would 
mean if he doesn't come back to the table, John Higgins would have been whitewashed without potting the ball. Yeah. The only four points he scored tonight Six. were from an O'Sullivan foul. Yeah, that's the winning ball. 67. So, will it be four centuries in as many frames? 60. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. Chance to bring the awkward Ren into play here with the angle that he has. Oh, he's just missed it. Oh, and he may not have a pot on. Can he pot the red off the green? 82. Can he cut this one in, double it? Get in. Oh, yeah, so Black set up for 82 in the last frame, but what a night for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Two contemporaries, two greats of the game. But it's all been about this man. Ronnie O'Sullivan breaks them 135, 129, 102, and 82. Finals, a winner by four frames to nil.